welcome them and say, I can finally see you. I can see clear. Okay, never mind. All right, but yes, God bless you. Uh, we're glad to have you. We welcome you in the name of Jesus and uh, also on behalf of our spiritual leaders in the house uh, whom we appreciate. That's uh, Pastor Joey and Pastor Brian with matching suits this morning. Uh, let's give them a lovely round of applause <laughs> along with their wives who we appreciate and we thank God for them. I believe it's Auntie Noreen's birthday coming up. She's uh, fifth, turning 50 this uh, coming week. We thank God. Uh, for her. Uh, but yes, we have so many people celebrating their birthdays. Uh, we have uh, Michelle Dwarika, 39, uh, Asha, Basil Cotello, Catherine, Malcolm, Cinda, uh, Pastor Salva, Adele, Melody. Then we have Sholene also celebrated her 39th birthday. Uh, who else? Anybody else? Uh, happy birthday for Tuesday. Desiree, oh, so many people. We have to sing for them. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to all of you. Happy birthday to you. Michelle says, I forgot her birthday, which is Tuesday, but. Happy birthday, Shalda. We'll sing next week. But yes, uh, God bless you. And uh, yes, we are glad that you are here. Wonderful week of fasting, amen? Uh, it was really great. And uh, we thank you all for being here and participating. We hope that God uh, blessed you. Uh, but yes, the, the work has just begun, amen? Uh, are you with me this morning? You know, after Jesus fasted, he was tempted. And then he began his ministry. So... Uh, after you fasted, it's time for you to do some stuff. Amen. Come on, say amen. amen. Is the speakers working? Can you hear me this morning? Uh, it's time for us to do some stuff. And so we pray that you'll make it happen in Jesus' uh, name. Just a few announcements. Uh, remember that this Saturday, everybody say Saturday. Saturday is a men's conference. Uh, that's on the 12th. You have to RSVP. Say RSVP. What does that mean? Let me hear somebody. Say. What does RSVP mean? Reply. You have to reply. You have to book your place. So, uh, men, if you are coming, it's half past eight to half past eleven. Uh, you have to uh, alert the church office. Or if you look on Facebook, you'll see some details there. You can email that uh, address and confirm your seat. We need that because of catering purposes. And so uh, you have to uh, reserve your place. Anybody knows uh, Masoja uh, Josiah Mziza? Anybody knows that guy? There's, a, there's an actor, a famous actor, a celebrity, South African celebrity, going to be here this Saturday uh, along with the guests. Uh, he was an, uh, he's an entrepreneur, influencer, actor, poet, producer, storyteller, writer. He made an appearance in Josie Streets. Sokulu and Partners, a place called Home, Isidingo, and Scandal, and also Uzalo. That's a celebrity, Masoja um, uh, Msiza. He's going to be here this Saturday along with Dad, Pastor David Molapo, and many others. Uh, so please uh, remember that you have to RSVP for that. Then next week, Friday, say Friday, Friday. is our men's fellowship. We're calling it Big Bros, all the Big Bros. We are gathering together next week, Friday. You also have to give Diren and Sean your details for that. Uh, uh, we're having some braai and all of that. You're welcome to come and invite a person along as, uh, for that. Then uh, lastly, we'll tell you more about that. Remember, our Tuesday meetings are as usual. And then uh, lastly, uh, we have a youth band. If you want to join that, you can uh, give us your names after church. But yes, I don't think there's anything else. Dad will tell you more. Please put your hands together for him as he comes up. Amen. Thanks, uh, Sid. Thank you. Good morning. Pastor Sid, good morning. Uh, God bless you in the name of Jesus. Put the stand on one side. Thank you very much. Morning, everybody. Was wonderful fasting last week. How many of you made a dent in your spiritual life? For the better? Let's see. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, I mean business. Come on. Tell, say it better. Say, I mean business. Business with God. And I pray the Lord will bless you and the Lord will honor you this morning as you've come. Thank you again. Good morning, Pastor Brian. Now it's brighter. I can see most of you better, which is so beautiful. 
Amen. It's good to see you this morning. And I pray the Lord will bless you. A strange thing happened to me yesterday. Uh, last night, I'm going through my wardrobe. And then I hear somebody say, Bishop. And I said, oh, what's it? I'm going through my wardrobe again. He says, Bishop. And I look, it's a suit speaking to me. And the suit said, I haven't been to church in a long while. I said, that's not a problem. He says, yes, it's a problem. My, the suit speaking to me. He said, Bishop. You didn't take me to the anointing service. I saw a Bermuda shorts at the anointing service. And you didn't take me, so I was forced to put it on. This morning. So the, the Bermuda came last week. That's why I brought my suit to church this morning. I used to bring your clothes to church sometimes. You know the emperor, new clothes. You remember the story? Very good. So the Lord bless you this morning. I'm happy to see you. Don't forget what Pastor Sid said about the, uh, on, on the coming week. And the 18th is a date for the men's fellowship. The other stuff is happening also. And I pray the Lord will bless you. Thank you to uh, Leon who gave us the, um, the sanitizers. The Lord bless you. Vaccination. My wife and I had the booster. And who knows, during the course of this service, I might turn into Antichrist. You never know. You never know what will happen. So both of, uh, both, both of us had the booster, and uh, I'm encouraging you, get the vaccinations, get the booster. We're having somebody come to church so that the Lord can use them to help us to get all of that stuff done. So good morning. God bless you. Pastor Elvis is starting his church this Sunday morning. We're going to be with him. And uh, thank you to all of the speakers last week, Pastor Miriam, Pastor Sid, Anita, Pastor Brian, Red, Sean, the musicians, bus drivers, ushers, Diren and the team, the sanitizers, Isaac, overtime, the sound technicians who are always blessing us. And uh, to you who came, God bless you. Give them all a good praise offering to the Lord. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. The Lord be with you. And the Lord grant you every good blessing. Uh, it's a good time to sow. You'll be receiving an appeal letter. Heed that appeal letter. And uh, who knows what God will do for you in the name of Jesus. So I pray the peace of God be with you. That 80-year-old mother, she heeded my advice. She's not getting married. Uh, uh, let me put this up. Uh, Romans chapter 3. I don't know if you have it. Uh, verse number 3. It says this. For what if some did not believe? Will their be unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar. Go home, read Romans chapter 3 and verse number 3 and 4. That's not on your screen, but those two verses tell you that God speaks. If God speaks and when God speaks, it doesn't matter whether you believe it or not. It still remains true. So if you listen to the word of the Lord and you say, I don't care, doesn't alter what God says. So that's what the Bible says, so you keep that in mind. Certainly, it doesn't make God's word of none effect. Kindly repeat after me. Say, I have come to the Father's house. I didn't hear. Say, I have come to the Father's house to listen to the voice of God. The word spoken today will manifest in my life because I am living in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I am living in the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read two texts to you. Welcome to those of you watching us by live stream. I don't know if that is on. My time is not there as well. The Bible says, verse number 2 of Exodus 17, The people contended with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. Verse number 5 says, The Lord said to Moses, Go on before the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel also take in your hand your rod with which you struck the river and go. Verse number 6. I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. You shall strike the rock and water will come out of it. The people may drink. And the Bible says Moses did that. Everybody say strike the rock. Then Numbers chapter 20. That's the verse up there for you. The Bible says that they come to a place called Kadesh. And verse 2 says, there was no water for Moses and the congregation. The people contended with Moses and said, if only we had died when our brethren died before the Lord. Then the Bible says, number 7, the Lord spoke to Moses, take the rock, you and your brother Aaron, 
Stand before the congregation. Speak to the rock before their eyes. It will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water out of the rock for the people to drink. Moses did that. Verse number 10. Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock. Moses said, Hear now, you rebels. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod. Water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. Everybody say, speak to the rock. Come on, let's worship him for a few minutes, and then we'll talk to the Lord and the Holy Spirit this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Jesus, you wipe away all tears. You melt the broken heart. You're the answer to it all. Jesus, oh, I call him way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the, the darkness, my God, that, that is, is who you are. You're the way maker, oh, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless his word. Bless our fellowship in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the team a good round of applause this morning. So God brought the people out of Egypt and the Bible says he brought them out by a mighty hand. God brought them out by a mighty hand. And the scripture tells us that they came through the Red Sea. And the Bible also tells us that they went into the wilderness, but the destination was the promised land. Everybody say, promised land. That's the destination. But I read two texts for you. The Bible says, they come into the wilderness, they have no water. Exodus chapter 17. Moses talks to God. He says to the Lord, there is no water. Give this people some water. So the Lord says to Moses, get to the rock, strike the rock. Are you hearing me? Hit the rock. With your rod, the Bible says Moses does that. The water comes out of the rock. Isn't that beautiful? The people drank. They are happy. And uh, the Bible says that they call that na the name of the place Massah and Meribah. That means a place of contention and complaining. Temp temptation and contention. So the first time, God said, strike the rock. It's going to be all right. Now, there's a second request for water. My notes are up. Second request for water. This is the place called Kadesh. Now, the people are complaining. They said, we should have died. I want you to know at this point, they have been coming a long way. Then Moses is talking to the Lord the second time. And Moses is saying to God, now the people don't have any water. The Bible says, God says to Moses, this time, he says, speak. Everybody say speak. So, observe. This point, Exodus 17, he said, strike the rock. Now, here, God is saying to Moses, speak to the rock. He says, Moses, speak. The water is going to come. Then Moses is ready to give the people the water. But what's the words? Speak to the rock before their eyes. It will yield its water. Thus you shall bring forth the water. But what happens here in verse number 10 of Numbers 20? Moses, Aaron gathered together. Moses is saying to them, Hear now you rebels. Must we bring you water up? Then Moses lifted up his hand, struck the rock twice and water came up. Now here God said strike the rock. He did that very nice. The second occasion God said speak. So Moses is here. He says I'm not speaking. I'm striking the rock. Not like he did once. Boom, boom. Water came out. The people drank. Are you hearing me? The people drank. Now what I want you to see is 
that Moses' life is a picture of grace increase in a person's life. If you look at Moses' life, you will see that there is an evidence of increasing grace in Moses' life. He's a baby. He's hid by his mother. You know the story very well. Then she can't hide him anymore. She puts him in the river. And the Bible says Pharaoh's daughter picks him up. There he's raised by Pharaoh's daughter. Later on the Bible says he kills an Egyptian. The scripture also tells, tells us he flees to the desert. And the Bible says he's working for his father-in-law. God meets him in the burning bush. He can't speak. He can't stammer. Can't do any of those things. God sent, uh, sent the plagues. To release God's people out of Pharaoh's bondage. They come out and, 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 and God blesses them. You see from a little boy. Moses is increasing in grace. And he comes to this place. God says strike. And he's moving on in the almighty God. When he comes here. God is saying speak. Can you see the little boy progressing then he comes to this place then he's going to a further place in God here he's not lifting hands here he's not contending with Pharaoh here he's not worried about people it's just him and God and all God is saying my man Moses all you've got to do is speak this is gonna happen it's a good place not like when your mother was hiding you from Pharaoh's men. You've come to a position. I'm showing you that grace increases in your life. Tell your neighbor there's a grace increase. Are you hearing me? You just have to speak. Do you know that you've got a grace increase in your life? Every day you're getting better. God is blessing you. God is honoring. Now, I want you to know when his grace had increased so much that you don't have to strike anymore. You don't have to lift your hands. You don't have to do anything. Your grace has become so much that here you're just speaking. That other time you had to strike. You've traveled. They tell us they could have traveled between that point and this. They could have traveled 300 miles for over 30 days. Now, uh, God is saying, speak, you've come so far. But he's not listening to the Lord. He's not talking to God. He's not worried about God. He lifts up his hand, strikes the rock twice. And God said, speak to the rock. My, my beloved, hear this. Hear, hear, hear what God is saying. You see, when you talk to God, God's thoughts are not your thoughts. God's ways are not your ways. His thoughts are higher than ours. His ways are higher than ours. Don't deal with God like you deal with your cousin or your uncle. Deal with God like he is God. So he says, I don't want to operate like you. I want it to be different. So he's at the height of his life. Grace has increased. And, 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 and God uh, is speaking to him. But you see, my friends... When you're walking with God, your seasons of grace, God makes different demands of you. Every season of grace, God makes demands on you. So God made a different demand for him when he was a baby, young man, later on in the wilderness. Then when he came to strike the rock, there was a different demand. And then right at this point here, there is another demand. And the demand in this season of his life is speak. In that season, God said strike. Are you hearing me? So in your life, God makes different demands in, in different seasons. But here, yeah, this is a new season in his life. He doesn't care. He came to this season where all you got to do is speak. But he is not bothered. He's not listening. He doesn't care. What he wants to do is, he wants to operate in this old season. God brought him here where you do nothing but just speak. And he's saying, no, 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 no. God doesn't know what he's doing, man. 
what am I listening to? Let me operate the same way I did before. So he bashes the rock. Boom, boom. And the rock brings forth one. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, over here, over here, he's got a performance. God said strike. There, God said speak. He's not speaking. He's using an old method. He boom, boom. Now watch his performance. He tells the people, Hear you rebels, agitators, trouble, he's here, agitators, troublemakers, thieves, liars. Hear you rebels, must we bring you water out of the rock? And then he goes boom, boom, hits the rock. Hey, not your people. What are you calling them rebels for? God's people. Not your water, Moses. What are you saying? We provide water. My beloved, in the season, he forgot about who's in charge. Are you hearing me? He got so fat-headed. He got so thick-skinned. He's not listening to the God who brought him through the seasons. Here, you rebels, must we bring you, like this great artist now, he goes, he hits the rock, boom, boom, drink, like he did it. But God told him, go speak. Go speak. Are you hearing me? God said, go speak. And the man's not listening. Suddenly, he gave, became important. You see, my friends, he's not doing this for God anymore. He's playing for his public gallery. Let me go. For, he's playing for Facebook. He's playing for his WhatsApp. He says, here, now, no longer God. This is him. Are you hearing me? When God changes the seasons. Your walk and my God, walk, my beloved, is a journey with grace. Is a journey in grace. Your walk with God, my walk in God, is a journey with grace and a journey in grace. From the time you were born, up to the time you die, you're dependent upon the grace of God. Everything in your life is dependent upon the grace of God. Jesus said it well, without me you can do nothing. It's a journey of grace. But I want you to know the good news is grace is not stagnant. Grace doesn't remain in one quarter. Grace is continuously on the increase. Every day in your life is different from the other day. Every day in your life is a better day. Because the Bible says that God gives us grace. The Bible says that God gives us more grace. The Bible says God gives us greater grace. The Bible says God gives us the grace of God. The Bible says God gives us grace upon grace. The Bible says says God gives us abundant grace. The Bible says God gives us manifold grace. The Bible says God gives us the grace of the Father. I'll tell you what, you have to walk in God. You have to talk in God until grace completely consumes you. And your whole life is an expression of the grace of God. Whether you're walking in the street, cooking your food, washing your dishes, doing your chores, or in the office, business deals, your life is an epitome of of the grace of God. It's the summary of who God is in your life. Every day. Every day. The grace is increasing. I thank God. I'm better than I was last week. You thank him. You're better than you were the week before. You know why? He gives grace upon grace. Upon grace. Upon grace. Upon grace. So much so. That grace comes oozing out of you. You're living by grace. 
you're living. The grace quotient is increasing. Grace means greater responsibility. Grace means greater accountability. You see, as you're walking in God, you become more accountable. Are you hearing me? You become more responsible. Grace means as the grace increase, increases, your accountability increases. As your grace increases, your responsibility increases. Are you hearing me? All of these things increase. Paul says it well. 1 Corinthians 13. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Jesus said, to whom much is given, much is required. 2 Corinthians 3.18. We all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. My beloved, when God gives you grace, he gives you responsibility. When God gives you grace, he gives you accountability. Whether you're in kindergarten or you're finishing your PhD, you're still accountable to God. Whether you're a businessman or whether you're a worker, an employee, you still account to him. The grace you have, you respond to God, you're accountable. Is there somebody that's accountable today? But you see... Your manner of life must reflect the season of grace you are in. That means your life and my life reflects my season of grace. Are you hearing me? Wherever you are, your life reflects the season you are in. Moses, you are here. Great season in your life. I want you to reflect me in your grace by speaking. But you prefer not to do it. You're reflecting a past season, which you shouldn't do. Your life must reflect a season of grace. Say amen to the Lord. Now listen, it must reflect your present state and condition. Your life is corresponding with your grace. Amen. Is that a good way of saying it? Your life. Now, let me show you some examples. Your conduct. You're working with God for 20 years. 20 years I'm a Christian. I'm working with God. And then one day I'm coming and the pastor finds me that I'm drunk. <laughs> Help us. I'm drunk. What happened to you? That 20 year is not working. You're supposed to be in the season. But you're reflecting your strength season. Are you hearing me? That means your walk is not corresponding with the grace. Let me preach to you a little more. You see, your church gathering, 20 years ago you started. You just got married. Of course, Sunday morning you want to lie in bed with your new wife who blames you. If she's 36, 24, 36, that's inches. But Coke bottle style wife, who won't want to stay in bed with her? So Sunday morning, you find it hard. But you're walking with God. Children are coming. You find it a little hard. Better. You're working now. You're getting paid. You bought a car, VW, 1600 Beetle. You're moving on. You're moving on with God. Right? Eh? 20 years down the line, I don't expect you to be in a strike season. Your seasons in God have changed. <laughs> Nobody has to call you. Your church gathering. I'm, I'm on this this morning. Your kingdom finances. You tithed. Before my good friend got promotion, you were a constable. You didn't have any stars. You're working hard. Working hard. Your season's changing in life with the grace of God. Now, you're a commander. Why are you still tithing like a constable? Hello? What are you tithing like a constable? You're commander, man. 
God's grace brought you. Right, Lord? God's grace brought you. Then your, 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 your kingdom business and God. You had three clients. You're serving God. Came past every week. I got three clients. One brought me this. Day. God is blessing you. God is blessing you. Businessman, you're getting better. Now you got 50 clients. You have 50 clients. Your business is another season in God. Hey, you, what are you serving God like you did in the strike season? You see, we all like Moses. When we come into this season, we are behaving like we were there. And yet God brought us. Are you hearing me? The season of your grace corresponds with how you respond to God. Are you with me? Your marriage and your relationship. Let me get further with this. I'm enjoying this. Single. House. Serving two kids and all that. All of that. You're very single. Easy, easy life. Now you're married. You're an old man. Your belt is not buckling anymore. Are you still, still acting like your children were small? Are you hearing me? I am saying to you, your season in God, your grace season, must be reflected in your life. I told you to speak. You are still striking. You see what happened to us? We moved physically into this, but mentally we're stuck there. Mentally, we stuck in the strike season. That was God's contention with Moses. He says, what's up, my man? My beloved, season after season. You see, you can't function with last year's mentality. If God gave you grace for this present season, function with today's grace mentality. Not like you did. When I was a child, I walked like a child. I lived like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. God is looking at this fellow. He says, he's walked with me so long. What's wrong with him? Can't he see the seasons change? No. I am Moses. I'll operate as I want. So in a new season, he's operating with an old mentality. And God is displeased. But season after season, you have to keep in step with God. Say hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to walk with anybody? Don't walk with great men. That's fine. You can walk with great men. You say, this man is my buddy. I'll tell you, if you look through, 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 uh, through Devian's album, his photo album, you'll be shocked. Some of you will probably wee in your pants. He's met such celebrities. Thank God for that. If you look at it, Reggie also has a lot of people that he's met. I'll tell you what. But in this season, I'm telling you, you have to walk with God every step of the way every season my God, Monday, I'm starting a new season, but I'm walking with you. I've finished my fasting and prayer. I'm walking with you. Every step, get up in the morning. God, I'm not going to buy those groceries unless you go with me. I'm not going to do anything unless you're with me. Step by step, season after season, I keep in step with God. I do what God wants me to do. I require what God wants me to do. Enoch walked with God. That's what the Bible says. I love that. I pray ladies and gentlemen that in this walk of grace every day you will get up every morning and say oh please let me walk with you Jesus. The Bible says Paul was struck down in Acts chapter 9. He said what will you have me to do? I've had my own way but now I want to do your will. Are you hearing me? Isaiah saw the angels. The Bible says Thus the angels cried holy, holy, holy. The posts of the temple shook and Isaiah looked at the heavenly father. He said, send me Lord. I will go. Isaiah was willing to walk with the almighty God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 50 verse number four, four, it says, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned 
And I know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. And he says, God wakes me up every morning. He wakes me up with a ear, with a word in my ear, so that I know what I must say and what I must do. Ladies and gentlemen, before you even make one cup of coffee, say, God, tell me what to do today. Teach me your ways. Tell me how to look after my children. You know why? If you leave me, I am nothing. If you get out of my life, I have nothing. Every step of the way. This is a walk of grace. Season after season. When I had nothing, you were with me. That was my season. I got a little bit. You are still with me. This is my season. I'm getting much. You are still with me. My season. Every season, walk with God. You came out of fasting. God help you. Moses is at the pinnacle of his career. He's at the pinnacle of his kinder career. <coughs> you probably want to, want to record some of the stuff I tell you. Moses is at the pinnacle of his career. He's uninterested in what God says. Hey, this fellow talks with God. This fellow saw the burning bush. This fellow saw the water come out of the rock. Now, he's got nothing to do with God. He's not worried. He wants to do things. Watch this. He's uninterested. He's now playing Frank Sinatra. Anybody know? He says, and now the end is near. And so I face the final curtain. My friend, I'll say it clear. I'll state my case of which I'm certain. I've lived a life that's full. I've traveled each and every highway, but more, much more than this, I did it my way. <laughs> Moses singing that, he says, regrets, I've had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption. I planned each charted course, each careful step along the byway. But more, much more than this, I did it my way. You see, Moses was playing Frank Sinatra. He says, nothing to do with you. My way. That song is America's anthem of self-determination. You know what it is? It says, nothing in life matters more than living on your own terms. It's a nice song, but it's saying it's got a message. He said, I don't care about your terms. I live on my terms. I do it my way. You say speak, I say strike. Are you hearing me? God is there. Doesn't care about his season of grace. He doesn't care about accountability. He doesn't care about it. I'll do it my way. That's what he's singing. I'll do it my way. You know what happens? God sees that. He says, hear you rebels. Ba -ba 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 -ba. What's we give you up? God didn't tell him to do that. God said, speak. He's operating and knows. Immediately, God shuts down the grief. 
Have you been to stores in the old times? They had shutters. Verlum, I saw that. Durban, Gray Street, West Street. Close of business, five o'clock. The shutters come out. Same thing. God shuts the grace in his life. You want to do it your way. God shuts the grace. Yeah, what God says. The Lord spoke to Moses in Numbers 20, 12. Because you didn't believe me to hallow me in the eyes of the children, you shall not bring this assembly which I, into the land which I have given them. God says, you didn't believe me, you didn't trust me, you didn't treat me with holy reverence, you insulted me, you didn't glorify me. The grace you carry is mine. That's what God said. Now, shut off the grace. No grace. Shut the grace off. You're supposed to take people to the promised land? You're not taking them. No milk and honey. You were supposed to take my people into the promised land. That was my promise to you when I met you in the burning bush. That was my promise to you when you went to Pharaoh. That was a promise when you came out of Egypt. Now, that grace is shut down. Ladies and gentlemen, how many have lost money? How many have lost girlfriends? Hey, I lost a girlfriend. I'll tell you what, Pastor Brian. I, I was young that time. Eh? My God. I liked a girl eh? before Miriam. I liked her. Didn't love her. I liked her. I was going to marry her. I thought, it's a beautiful girl. Eh? And then, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then one day she sent me a Dear John letter. You know, she said, hey, I don't want you anymore. My heart was broken, but she did a good thing. She said, I got someone for you. So she sent me the name and details of the other person. That other person, I met the other person, looked like the bus knocked her. She looked like she's <laughs> I said, no, thank you. I'll wait and God brought Miriam into my life or me into her life. I don't know which was true, but God brought it. But listen, how many of you lost? You lost a lot of things. How many lost money? Yeah, you lost money, you lost time. Hey, you can lose anything. But when grace is shut off, when you got no grace, you are finished. Completely finished. Completely finished. God said, I'm shutting the grace off. Living dead is an oxymoron. It means you look like you're living, but you are dead. <laughs> Food, clothes, marriage, job you can use. But inside you, there's a deep void. There's a vacuum. There's blackness. There's darkness. Nothing in your life is meaningful. Food doesn't taste good for you. Music doesn't make you tap your feet. Good things don't interest you anymore because the grace has gone out of your life. Young men and women, you can lose a hundred boyfriends. I know some of you have had about 90 something, but that's all right. But you can lose a hundred boyfriends, that's fine. You can lose your girlfriends, young men, but don't lose God's grace. You might lose it, but when God shuts it down, you're in trouble. When God shuts it down, you're in trouble. You see, countless numbers. It's amazing. People are shutting down the grace of God in their lives. God brought them into new seasons, but they prefer to walk in old seasons. Not keeping in step with the conduct, gathering, business, lifestyle, church, the things I mentioned. Beware. Sometimes we're blaming people. People didn't do this to us. Devil didn't do it to us. Boss didn't do it. Look a little further. God shut the grace. God. And when God shuts, nobody can open. Beloved, protect your grace allocation. Seek to increase your grace allocation. We had the week of fasting and prayer. You know what that is for? I want to protect God's grace in my life. I want to increase God's grace in my life. That's your job. Don't pray for money. Money will come when grace comes. Don't pray for girlfriends. God will bring them when grace comes. Don't pray for marriage. God will bring marriage when grace comes. Protect the grace in your life. Let the grace increase. That's your job. That's my job. Let the grace increase. No. This is how you do it. Know and understand your seasons in God. Know where you are in God. Don't, when you know where you're in God, you're not going to go back to the striking position. 
Realize your hard work to get where you are. You came all this way, Moses. Hey man, if I was in that congregation, I would have told me, you're pagala. What is wrong with you? Has, can't you hear the voice of God? He should have heard the voice of God. Why did you behave that way? When you see people miss the grace, talk to them. You see, protect the grace of God, my beloved. Realize you work too hard. I'll tell you what, I worked hard. Pastor Brian will tell you he worked hard. You work too hard to come to where you are. Don't let it go. Be conscious every season of your life. I owe it to God. Don't worry. Moses, yeah. He's saying, yeah, now you rebels. Don't worry about what people say to you and think about you. You remember what God says about you. You keep the grace. My ultimate goal is the promised land. You see, my beloved, your main business in this life to ensure is that is to, your main business in life is to ensure your grace is alive. That's all. Get up morning. God, I pray my grace is living. God, I pray the grace is in me. You'll know it when you're praying. You'll know it when you're at work. You'll know it when you're with your family. You know the grace is in you. Keep the grace alive. Are you hearing me? Keep the grace functioning. Check up on your grace. Take your grace to church. Find out if its heart is still beating or it's dead. Are you hearing me? God may have shut it out. You look normal on the outside, but that grace is finished. God must help us. The grace must be linked to the almighty God. You see, my beloved, with that grace still intact and with your grace functioning, you will shift from glory to glory. It's only your grace that is going to keep you. My beloved, keep your grace alive. When you meet your girlfriend, when you meet your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, your family members, our main job is we must keep grace alive in this family. I don't care what dinner we have on the table. I don't care whatever happens, but we want to keep the grace alive because when the grace is alive, I'm going to shift from one glory to the other. When the grace is alive, every place I my foot shall tread, God gives to me. When the grace is alive, no man shall be able to stand before me. When the grace is alive, I'll walk around the walls of Jericho. When the grace is alive, I can chase the enemy. When the grace is alive, the sun will stand still. The moon will stand still. When the grace is alive, I'll come into a good and prosperous land. When the grace is alive, I'll come to a place where I'll get land which I didn't buy. Houses I didn't build. Vineyards I didn't plant. Wells I didn't dig. When the grace is alive, I'm the head and not the tail. When the grace is alive, I'll be eating last year's harvest, but I'll get a brand new harvest. When our grace is alive, strangers will save me, serve me. When the grace is alive, people are going to come with camel loads of goods. Gold will come to you. Silver will come to you. Precious stones will come to you. You'll get a gold chain around your neck. You'll get a ring on your finger. You'll get sandals on your feet. And you will get a coat to cover you. My beloved, the grace is alive in me. The grace is alive in you. The best thing is you'll walk with God. You'll talk with God and your grace, your grace is going to bring you to the promised land. Moses unfortunately shut off the grace. He didn't get in the promised land. You're going to go in because the grace is still available to you. Let me tell you this. Your grace is going to be tested. Your grace is going to be tested. Are you hearing me? Somebody's going to ask you. They'll say, those people spoke so evil about you. Are you still going to go back to them? Yes. You know why? I want to keep my grace intact. People did bad things to you. Should I reciprocate with evil? No, I'm not going to lift a finger. You know why? Because I am going to keep my grace intact. Somebody takes you to court. They're demanding from you. Are you going to counter sue them? No. You know why? I want to keep my grace intact. People hurt your family. People stole from you. People lied about you. People cheated. I am not going to respond. Why? Because I want the grace. <laughs> Foolish people. Every dog that barks, you are barking. Everybody that throws a stone, you are throwing. 
You know what's happening? Your grace is leaking. Your grace is leaking. And you're praying, you're saying, every place my foot shall tread, ah, that thing's happening. Your grace leaked out, you didn't even know it. Are you hearing me? I'm going to close. Say, thank God you're closing. I go to pastor's meetings three times a week. Three times a week. Sit with the pastors. One reason, I don't want to miss what God's saying. I don't want to be here and operate from there. That will be the greatest tragedy in my life. But let me close this. Let me close this. Thank God. Moses' grace was shut down. Exodus, oh, oh, what's this? Deuteronomy 32, verse 4. The Lord spoke to Moses. If you didn't hear anything, there's a fellow grace shut up. Go up this mountain, Mount Nebo, which is in Moab. It's across from Jericho. View the land of Canaan, which I give to the children of Israel. And die on the mountain which you ascend. Just like your brother Aaron died. Ha! Watch! I shut the grace off you. You're not going to the promise. I'll fix you up. I'm going to take you to the top of the mountain. You're going to see that thing. But you're not going. You'll only watch it from the, from, from the show glass. Outside, you're not going, my boy. I'll let you see it. You're not going. Go to the mountain, die. 51. Because you trans trespassed against me at the waters of Kadesh, you did not hallow my name. The children of Israel, you shall see it, but you shall not go to the land which I am giving. Because of this, I shut the grace down. You are not going, my boy. God is no respecter of persons. 34, 5, Deuteronomy. Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there according to the word of the Lord. They buried him in the valley. Verse number 7, Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his natural vigor diminished. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses ended. No! You're dying! His eyes are not dim. Strength remained normal. Do an autopsy. Know what they'll say? The coroner will say, nothing wrong with this fellow. Perfect. But he's dead. He didn't die of any natural cause. God made that sure. His eyes still functioning straight. He died because I shut grace off. Are you hearing me? He was one of the few people who was privileged to attend his own funeral. Come up here. Die. How would you like that? Hey, this fellow must have felt bad. If God were to embarrass anybody, God did that to him. You know why? He didn't recognize his season of grace. Shut it down. God made him attend his own funeral. <laughs> I, can't, I, I had some thoughts about it, but I can't, I can't uh, say much. But uh, what a thing God did. He died. Eyes still functioning. Body is good. Grace shut up in his life. Ladies and gentlemen, don't mess with the blessings of God. God's blessed your business. I am warning you today. Ah, I'm not a good fellow with a t-shirt. Uh, so I put the coat on. <laughs> I am warning you. Don't mess with God. He brought you so far. And when we say we want you to support the church, ah, he's always asking, watch out! Watch out.
with the season with God. Speak season, don't go to strike. We call you to serve God. You serve God. We finished fasting now. Serve God. Don't come with your strike stories. Yeah, it's where you are. Are you hearing me? We want you to live your life. Hey, fathers, mothers, you stop beating your wife and your children and all that story. You're in this season with God. Stop that nonsense from the strike area. The striking days are over. You're here. Children, young men and women, you brought up in a Christian home, you've had enough light. You're in this season. Don't say you don't know what God is talking about. You know God. Your father and mother showed you how God brought them up. You don't speak nonsense. You married to a Christian family, you understand it. You're getting married, you understand it. I'm in the season here. I'm not going there. No matter what it costs me. You know why? That's what caused the grace to leave him. I want you to be happy. But at some point, I must remind you, it's a nice thing, but when you mess with him, oh, there are consequences. Next week, Pastor Valentino will be here. He will be speaking about the love and kissing and chocolates and flowers. But today, it's all, come on, let's stand. You know what? I must repent. You must repent. I don't want to mess with your grace, Father. I don't want to mess with your grace. I don't want to mess you with the grace. I'm not a Frank Sinatra. I'm not doing it my way. Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. Bless this place this morning. Bless this place. Just lift up your hands. Talk to God. Say, God, no matter how rich I get, no matter what position I'm in, no matter how much I am blessed, I do not want to operate in an old season. Come on. Kalama shaka baba bahasa. Businessmen, bring your business to God. Those of you starting out business, bring it to God. Those of you who've come into an inheritance, bring it to God. Those of you who are living for the Lord, bring it to God. Come on, come on, lift up your hands. Kalama shaka baba bahasa. Businessmen, bring your business to God. Those of you starting out business, bring it to God. Branda baka tikere mohusu, plese mi hashaka halabaka. Come on, let the spirit of God minister to you today. Come on, let the spirit of God minister to you this morning. Come on, let the spirit of God talk to Him. Talk to Him. Some of you in university, some of you in college, some of you in in in, in your in your secondary school, some of you are in promotion level. Don't shut the grace off. Don't shut the grace off. God wants to bless you. He parama kusim brebe beya hal kalaramo se prene beya shekalaba kasa. Come and talk to him. 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 Talk to him this morning. In the name of Jesus, talk to him. Kalama sura bebe ya kasa. I say yes. I say yes to your will. To your will, Lord. I say yes. I say yes. Where he. want you to pray this morning as Pastor Brian who is a father he'll endorse the words that I'm saying this morning I want you to lift your hands even if you haven't even if you got a child with you say God we mustn't we mustn't cut off the grace from our lives come on come on God is speaking to you this morning we thank you for your word Lord this morning we thank you for your son that shared the word of God. So much we've heard about grace. We thank you for your grace. Your hand merited favor. We thank you for this favor that come upon our lives. We do not deserve it, O oh God. 
but you bestowed it upon us you gave Moses grace when you met him by the burning bush by grace he was saved oh God by grace we are saved also you plucked out of the burning bush also today we are what we are because of the grace of God we thank you this morning we bless and praise you father for your way the way your word was shared to us my God the mistake that Moses made we pray tonight in the name of Jesus that we will not fall into that same error that Moses fell into O oh God hallelujah that Lord that you will be moved by grace and Lord you will stay in God's grace father we pray tonight in the name of Jesus as I bring your people before you I place them in the hell of your hands it is our prayer tonight father that your children will not forsake grace O oh God hallelujah even as your word tells us you told us father that you are the light of this world that he that followeth you shall not walk in darkness hallelujah we know Moses was faulty Moses lost some along the line he lost God he lost the light and what do you think happened he walked into darkness oh God and he lost the Lord the privilege of going and entering into the promised land we pray tonight in the name of Jesus Lord that your hand will be upon our life you'll quicken our spirit my God that we will grace grace will always go before us grace will always lift us up pray tonight father in the name of Jesus we will do Lord your ways are not our ways our thoughts are not your thoughts help us tonight in the name of Jesus that we will move with your thoughts we will be guided by your ways we will do what you want us to do because we believe it is the grace of God we want to live by God's grace oh hallelujah bless Lord tonight even as I commit your people before you I bring them all I lay them in the hell of your hands pray tonight other in the name of Jesus I pray for start happening I pray tonight in the name of Jesus for the quickening power of God hallelujah the quickening power of God will lift up your people will quicken your people we will never be the same again hallelujah we just been through the week of fasting oh God and we are believing you we are trusting you my God we want to shine for you we want to make you known and the only way we can make you known is by the grace of God may we never have a depart from grace we pray a special prayer for them that are not well we come at all thine children of God tonight that are not well in their body pray tonight in the name of Jesus father a special touch oh God a special touch upon your children who are not well my God they may be healed they may get up from where they are my God that you may place them on the rock to stay bless your children today bless us all even as we take our leave go with us for we ask it in Jesus name Amen father as we continue we bring Edwin to the Lord is going to have this procedure we're praying the hand of God be upon him grace of God be his and he'll be healed totally completely by the power of the living God grace will abound in him we thank you for all the others who are unwell you will heal them too loving father now we pray even as we bring our tithes our offerings our first fruit our priestly seeds to thee that you will bless us and you will honor us my father and as we leave today we pray the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ love of God our Father fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all today and until we meet Jesus in the face of in the clouds of glory and God's people say amen you may you may come with your tithes, your offerings, whatever else. God bless you.